Hey there everyone, my name is Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. So today I have the pleasure of talking to you guys about a game that I have a very personal connection to. And hopefully by the end of this video review you'll understand why I have such a personal connection to it, but also understand why I feel this is a game that everybody needs to play at some point. It not only has a great experience that's high quality and really kind of puts a lot of other games to shame, but it also has a cool story behind the development of it, which was developed by one person. Literally one person created this game. But enough gushing about it, let's get into the nitty gritty about this game. This is Dust, an Elysian Tale. Dust and Elysian Tale is a mixture of Metroidvania platforming and beat em up style games with a little bit of RPG elements mixed into it. The game takes place in the land of Falana and follows a warrior who has lost his memories named Dust. He ends up meeting a flying nimbak called Fidget after a magical sword awakens him and guides the two of them to various corners of the land, both to recover Dust's lost memories and help everyone in their path. As their journey goes on, you get to see the magical world of Falana and its citizens, as well as the many monsters and hardships that plague the land. While it has a few flaws within its plot here and there, the larger narrative has a heavy focus on themes of loss, self-discovery, and doing things for the well-being of others. More importantly, it's a game with phenomenal visuals and great gameplay to go along with it. Now, one of the first things about Dust and Legion Tale is that it's a visually pleasing game. It just looks beautiful on screen. Whether you're playing it at 1080p or even trying to play it at like 4K, it just looks freaking awesome. And all the designs of this game were done by one person. All the different characters, all the backgrounds, all the little details here and there. It just looks beautiful. It's just something that has all these little details you can notice throughout, whether you're just standing still and looking at the idle animations or just looking into the background and the foreground and seeing all those little like sparkles, little details, little slight movements that just give life to everything that's on screen. Some of the characters do sound a little bit bland, a little bit too generic, but some of the main characters like Dust, like Fidget, or any of the other characters you come across really just kind of ooze personality. Granted, they're kind of thrown into a variety of different situations, but you really get to see their personalities in a lot of different dimensions, whether it's serious in tone, whether it's fun in tone, or rather just, you know, kind of just playful or just interesting with the context of the scenario that's happening. The other thing that you'll notice about Dust and Elysian Tale is that it looks really cool when it's just the dialogue sections between two characters that are talking. There isn't a lot of cutscenes, there's a couple scattered around here and there, but even when it's just you've seen two characters very stagnant, kind of similar to a lot of other JRPGs that don't really have the time or the budget to put in cutscenes, it still has a lot of life within the characters moving around. Again, there's just very subtle movements that just make them come to life and make them look really good overall. But more important than that, besides the look, besides the characters and all this different stuff, we really have to talk about the gameplay about Dust, which I feel like is its best aspect because it blends such interesting elements from both the Metroidvania type of style as well as also that of classic brawlers to really make something unique and special. The platforming and combat here are easily some of the best in the genre. The controls are incredibly solid and responsive, the places you explore are detailed, and the combat is fast and fierce. Dust can fight monsters and other characters in a very beat-em-up style, where you have light and strong attacks that can be mixed together to form combos and other special moves. The craziest special move in here is the Dust Storm, which makes you spin around and zip across the area, damaging all that's in your path and building up huge combo strings. This approach to the combat meshes very well with the Metroidvania-like exploration, which makes up the majority of the game. As you defeat enemies, Dusk can gain experience and level up to make himself and his companion Fidget stronger, allowing them to deal more damage, have more health and defense, and even have better luck fighting items from dropped enemies. It's a very light approach to RPG level progression, but it's no more different than that of the great classics like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which did things in the same way. Dust can also find additional moves and abilities in areas that will allow him to explore deeper into levels and find hidden secrets. For some, all of this might get a bit repetitive, but if you're someone that loves these kinds of games with gorgeous visuals, you're hardly ever going to get tired seeing what the game shows you next. The controls are really what makes everything work here. Everything just happens at your command. It doesn't feel like things are too weighty. It doesn't feel like things are kind of lagging or anything of the sort. This has really solid controls, very akin to a lot of classic brawlers that you probably found during the late 90s into the 2000s. Another cool thing about Dust's gameplay is that it has a lot of different secrets and things to discover as you're exploring the various different areas. There's a lot of great secrets that are not only fun nods to some of those classic games of which Dust Elysian Tale is inspired by, but also to other indie games that were in development at the time that Dust was really kind of being put out and published for the first time. There's a number of different areas to explore. It doesn't ever become too overbearing and like, you know, overzealous with the types of places you could go to or just how in-depth they are, but it is enough not only to just make you kind of explore some of the different areas in the environment, but also kind of keep you moving and still focused on the main task at hand. All the different quests you can get involved with take you to various different places, but you're always still going to at least have easy access to the main story that's at hand. 
The other element we have to discuss about Dust and Elysian Tales is that we have to talk about this soundtrack, which I think is a really great soundtrack that has a lot of different types of tracks, but still fits within the overall visual aesthetic and the context of the story that's happening. The music of Dust and Elysian Tale is pretty great. Some of the tracks have a very emotional weight to them, especially when they're played during the game's more heavy-handed moments. But while the entire soundtrack still has a very fantasy-oriented sound, there's a wide range of themes here. The music could get upbeat during boss fights or big skirmishes in a few areas, but still be able to slow things down and let things become a little bit more somber in tone and complement the emotion behind the dialogue and events taking place. My absolute favorite tracks in the entire game are the main menu theme at the very start of the game and the Abadis Forest stage theme. There is additional music in the soundtrack that is still great, including some alternate versions of stages which have a totally different tone to them, but if I had to choose which two pieces of music to find Dust and Elysian Tale, it would be those two for sure. Take a listen real quick, and you'll get a sense of the magical nature of Dust's world and the action that's taking place within it. The music is fantastic, and I think that there's a lot of great sounds, a lot of great tracks that you'll probably listen to as you're playing the game, and it'll fit right with the emotion of what's playing out on the scene, or just in the areas that you're exploring and fighting various enemies. When there's different times where things are a lot more serious, a lot more heavy-handed with the emotion to them, the sound takes a much more somber approach. The main theme that you hear in the main menu, I think is just fantastic. It works so good with this game, and you hear it at various different points of the story, and it just clicks so damn well. I love it. On the flip side of that, when you get into the more action-packed scenes, when you're actually fighting various enemies, where there's a lot more conflict that's happening on, especially towards the later parts of the game, the music just picks up and it just works so well with everything that's happening. Things kind of pick up the pace, they get become a little bit much more kind of like, you know, impactful with the different types of sounds and the notes that you're hearing. It just works so good and works so great alongside and parallel to the dialogue, to the visuals, to what you're doing when you're actually playing the game and you're fighting and stuff. It just is so cool and this is like how I love my different video game soundtracks to really kind of work well with what's going on on screen for me. But now let's talk about why this game has such a personal connection to me and why I have such an affinity for Dust and Elysian Tale. Stop the music for a second. Stop the music. Let's, let's just, let me just be completely real and completely honest and open with you guys about why I love this game so much and why it just resonates with me so damn much. When Destiny and Legion Tale first came out, it actually came out in 2013, but I didn't necessarily play it until 2014, until after it was on the PlayStation 4. It got offered on PlayStation Plus at some point. And for me, the end of 2013 going into 2014 was a very tough time in my life. There was a lot of things that were happening. I had just come off the whims of just having a broken engagement, and there was a lot of stuff that was happening with the early parts of my, you know, games media career on YouTube and stuff. There, were, there was just a lot of things that were swirling around me at the time. And much like anything else, you know, when people are going through trials, tribulations, tough moments, or anything of the sort in their lives, they, they kind of like, you know, latch on to something, whether it's just like a specific game, a movie, or a type of act or something it is that gives them a little bit of solace and for me that was video games and luckily at the time I was able to play Dustin and Legion and Tail throughout the entire storm of that going on and even now I kind of get kind of cracked up thinking about it you know I remember specifically playing it one night and uh, I had gone towards the end part of the game. Let me put up a spoiler alert for this, you know, because I might spoil some of the stuff that's going on with Dust and Elysian Tales, so I apologize in advance, and I know I'm going way off the rails with this review, but bear with me, there's a point to all this. There's a scene in Dust and Elysian Tale that even now, again, kind of get a little, little tense about it, you know, just thinking about it, because it was just such a thing that resonated with me, where Dust and Fidget are towards the end of the actual story, and... There's a whole bunch of stuff that's happening. Things are going down. And dust is kind of caught in this place where, you know, a volcano is going to go off. And Fidget is just trying to help him to get out, you know, trying to actually really, really, uh, what is it? Trying to encourage him to really kind of move forward and actually, you know, get out of there because they, they want to make sure that they, they survive, right? And, and there's a line that Dust says that's really, really hit a raw nerve for me. You know, it, it, it came at an unexpected moment that, you know, it felt cathartic in a way. Dust, you know, as Fidget's trying to help him out, Dust turns to Fidget. He goes, sometimes it's just not enough Fidget. And for me, that 
that happened again. It hit such a visceral, raw nerve, you know, with everything that was happening to me at the time, where I felt like, you know, when you're trying to be optimistic and, and positive and all this stuff, and it's just like nobody's saying the, like the obvious thing sometimes. And it kind of just came out of nowhere, and all of a sudden I just broke down because, you know, it was kind of right at the time, you know. And it really kind of really hit that raw nerve for me. And I just, I had to stop playing for a little bit because, you know, it was such an impactful thing, you know. I need a minute. I need a minute. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, let's get back to the reveal. The thing that stands out the most to me about Dustin and Elysian Tale is how the culmination of everything from the story, visuals, and gameplay was able to connect with me on such an emotional level. It's not any one thing, but all of it working together. Though what was happening in game had nothing to do explicitly with my life, I was able to relate to it in some way after becoming fully engrossed in what I was playing. It hit me on such a very deep level at the right moment with an experience that already had a high level of quality going into its creation. Mind you, mostly done by only one person. No game will have the same effect on every person who plays it, but one has to acknowledge how some games are able to connect with people in such a way. It's a testament to how good they really are and how deep gaming as a medium could go for anyone. It's what Dustin Elysian Tale did for me at a time that was most unexpected, and only did more to make this one of my favorite indie games I've ever played. I feel like Dustin Elysian Tale just has so much good things going for it. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think any one game is completely perfect. And there can be very strong arguments for some that are out there. But I feel like all the different types of stuff, whether it's the visuals, the music, the gameplay, the story, the raw emotion behind the events happening in the story, uh, just works so well together. And hearing and knowing that it was done by one person like that, it just makes this game feel even more special than what people initially thought when they probably first saw it. I know it sounds obvious at this point, but would I be able to recommend Dustin Elysian Tale to anybody? And a thousand and one percent, yes. I feel like this is an indie game, even though some people get up in arms about it being Microsoft published at some point. Uh, this is an indie game that I feel like a lot of people need to play. It shows you not only what type of like high quality, high level that gaming can reach, the type of emotional level it can hit people with. This is just a game that I, I just love. And it's just, it's something that's really cool to me. And I think that it's awesome. And you definitely need to play it no matter what platform that you're on. So with that being said, that's my thoughts about Dustin and Legion Tale. I know, again, we got a little bit too real here, guys. I, I'm sorry about that, but I get a little bit emotional thinking about some of this stuff. You know, just being openly honest, openly real, openly genuine with all of you guys out there. Hopefully, you guys are able to check it out. I know that the game is coming out on Nintendo Switch very soon. They just announced it during E3, uh, during one of the conferences, that there's going to be a port of Dustin and Legion Tale for the Nintendo Switch. There's going to be a digital version on the eShop, but also, uh, was it, a limited run physical version of that that's actually being released by a limited run. And I'm really thinking about picking it up once the game comes out. I love this game. I think it's dope. It's probably one of the best indie games I've ever played, and I can't recommend it enough for you guys to check it out when you guys have the time. With that being said, leave me a comment down below in the comment section, guys. Tell me what you guys think about Dust and Elysian Tale or any indie games or just indie games in general. If you love your work, if you love that they're independent, all that different types of stuff, put it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for all my videos related to game reviews, vlogs, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. I got great content coming very, very soon that I know a lot of you guys are going to enjoy. Enjoy. Check out the playlist. There's a bunch of different videos there. If you haven't checked them out, there's a lot of stuff that I'm offering. And also, big shout outs to Jasmine Russell for supporting me at the Beast tier level on my Patreon page. If you guys didn't know, links in the description box below. I have a Patreon page. I do a whole bunch of cool stuff. I'm putting up exclusive content for everybody that checks out my stuff on Patreon. Uh, with Jasmine Russell, she's supporting me at the Beast tier. She gets shout outs on every single video for the entire month. Uh, big thank you for that. I really appreciate the support. Hopefully, you guys can check it out and support me as well. And with that being said, I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out, and stay epic, everybody. Thanks a ton, everybody, for checking out this video review. I really appreciate all of your support. Make sure you guys check out some of my other video reviews, as well as also my other vlogs that I have here on the channel. There'll be links in the description box below and here on the side. I will talk to you guys again very soon. Peace out, and stay epic, everybody.